Deep in the jungles of eastern Congo, the massive silverback Humba spends his days munching on the lush vegetation of Virunga National Park. His family of 11 are among the world's remaining 720 endangered mountain gorillas. As war rages in the region, the gorillas and the rangers who protect them are targeted by poachers and militiamen. Innocent Mbura Numwe is the ranger in charge of monitoring the park's gorillas. When you see the gorillas, you find an animal that is very much like us. They are our ancestors that got lost in the forest along the way. And when you see them and look at them in the eye, you can see that they are trying to communicate with you. They can't talk to you, but there is definitely a connection. Even if it's a difficult and dangerous job, we must continue to protect the wildlife. Even in the middle of war, it's a priority to protect the wildlife of Congo. In the 10 years since Innocent has been a ranger, more than 100 of his colleagues have been killed in the line of duty. Back when his father, Sylvester, became a ranger in the 1960s, he would host many tourists, and his greatest threat was poachers, not malicious. Sylvester is proud of his son for what he's been able to accomplish, as are the villagers who live around the park. As Innocent passes by, adults greet him with a warm hello. Children chase after him. Innocent is quite the diplomat, and he has to be. In this lawless and war-torn corner of Congo, his neutrality is crucial to his own well-being and the survival of the gorillas. We maintain a relationship with the local villagers for two reasons. First, we need to gather information, and getting information from the locals is the best way to find out what is going on in the park, if there's illegal activities happening, and who might be doing it. Second, we need to always make sure we educate locals about the importance of the park, to pass on their appreciation for it and make them understand its importance in preserving the gorillas. But Innocent's job takes a toll on his wife, Aline, and their six children, who have lived in the nearest city of Goma since rebels forced the rangers to flee their homes last fall. Innocent is home only four days a month, and his family worries for his safety. When the area is not secure, we worry very much when Innocent leaves for the park. But before he goes into the field, he phones us. He tells us everything is okay and there is no danger. The cost of living in Goma makes life very difficult for the family. The children long for the village where they lived closer to their beloved gorillas. They all want to become rangers, just like their dad. When we were in Bukima, they could see the gorillas and they liked that life. They don't know what it means to be a ranger because they are young, but they all say they will become one. Back at base camp, rangers and trackers assemble into teams to follow three guerrilla families. They prepare their guns and GPS systems before their three-hour walk into the forest. They never know what they'll face when they enter the park, so they adhere to a list of rules. It's forbidden to take uh, the photos with flash. Uh, it's forbidden to, to point the gorilla with your head, with your, your finger. Uh, don't eat uh, when we'll be with gorilla, don't drink anything, don't touch on gorilla. Uh, sometimes the, the silverback can come ahead, charging, please don't run. You have to scooch down and following the movement of the guide. The animals are just like us. They're just trying to survive, so we consider them our brothers. I hope the population of gorillas continue to increase despite the war. At the moment it's peaceful and we hope the peace continues. We hope the gorillas are able to produce more families and that we will be there to see it. I'm Matthew Clark with photographer Mary Knox Merrill for the Christian Science Monitor in Bukima, Democratic Republic of Congo.